got one simple question for you, America. Are you starting to see more immigrants in your neighborhood? Are you starting to see more people who maybe don't look like you? Do you think this is a coincidence? Or do you think maybe, maybe we're being invaded? There is a lot of stories about immigrants being put out there in the media lately. Uh, but I just want to pose the question to the audience. Do you guys notice an influx of immigrants um, when these immigrants are crossing our borders and entering our country, whether legally or illegally? Uh, is this something that you guys notice uh, affecting your community? Or is this just something that you see on TV? Because I'll be honest with you guys, living in, in this area, and I know the scenery right now doesn't particularly look very diverse or anything, but the truth is, living in New Jersey, uh, this is one of the more diverse places to live in the country. So as far as this immigrant uh, influx that everybody's talking about and that everybody's seen, I'm not really noticing it. I think the reality is a lot of people that are noticing an influx of immigrants in their neighborhood, uh, the reality is, is that a lot of these people are living in suburban and rural areas. And you hear about the Haitians and the Venezuelans. And these are areas that normally are very homogenous in terms of the racial diversity, right? The truth is, though, is that America was really born and bred off of immigration, right? This is a, a part of how America became so strong, is that people came to America, started fresh, started new. Um, I think a lot of people forget that, especially people who are in these more rural and suburban areas, right? Because they feel like, you know, all of this is theirs and they feel more of a sense of entitlement uh, to the land, to the country, to uh, the, the government benefits, right? The, the, the welfare systems that we have in place people feel like that's theirs. The reality is, is that there's some truth to it, right? Because if you've been here, you've been part of building this country and then people come after you and they want a slice of the pie too. Uh, everybody has to work and contribute to make that pie what it is. The reality is the melting pot system, right? And the melt the idea of the melting pot inherently is a double-edged sword because you're going to not only are you going to bring in, you know, productive people to society, right? You're going to bring in people who are productive. You know, you're going to bring in people who want to contribute to society. You're going to bring in people who want to grow, who want to, like, uh, make a name for themselves or, you know, at least just take care of their family, right, and, and do it in a safe and free environment. That's what America is supposed to be about. The problem, the problem is and why it's a double-edged sword is because you're going to have people that are going to be coming into this country and they're going to have the opposite ideals, right? They're going to want to, they're going to want to it up they're not here to see our success they want to tear it down they see us as an enemy right they they they're here to exploit our system so the so. truth is we got to talk about the elephant in the room right while a bunch of people that are coming here uh legally uh it's all fine and dandy right they're here to build and grow and support their family truth is a lot of people there's a lot like i'm not even like i can't exaggerate the a lot part there's 400,000 people that are coming here that are known criminals. Um, and we're not tracking them. Let me right? just explain what these numbers mean. ICE has something called a non-detained docket. Essentially what that is, is it means migrants who were encountered by DHS but are no longer in federal custody, who were caught and released at the border, released with the court date years away. They're in immigration proceedings. I think that when you have 400,000 individuals entering this country and we don't know where they're going, we don't know who they are, what their plans are for us, for America, uh, I think that people that live here have a legitimate reason to be concerned. Right? You're going to see the media sow a lot of discord amongst people, right? Because again, as I stated, there's people here that believe that this is all there. All of this, they think it's all there. And right. because of that, uh, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to fight against, they're going to fight back against the, the so-called invaders, right? They're going to fight back. They're going to want to take their land, take their country back from the so-called invaders. The problem is, and we, we have to, have to think clearly about these things that are 
going on affecting the country. Right? Um, since a certain VP came and took over as borders are, such a high percentage of people are just entering the country, uh, be it legally or illegally. Uh, just a, such a large amount of people entering the country is unchecked. Uh, it's, it's not going to be good for us, especially when you have damn near half a million people that are coming in are like actual criminals. Like these are known criminals and we have no way to track them and not keep up with them or not even, you know, get to talk about getting them out of the country or, or doing anything about the fact that they're here to begin with. This is this is the situation. This is this is what it becomes in our in our country. So when it comes to the current economic, political and environmental factors uh, that influence whether or not people believe we're actually being invaded by immigrants most of them are just really going to be outside of our control right just look at the response to hurricane helen by fema the scale of what's going on this is the state of north carolina this is the area that's without power still this is also the state of north carolina this yellow outline is the country of belgium that I've overlaid for scale. Okay, please. The mortality counts that you've seen in the tens are irresponsibly optimistic. Those are the people who've been identified. When you find someone's remains washed down a river, how do you know where they came from? How do you contact their loved ones to get an identification? When the cell towers are down, when the roads are down, when all of those people are still concentrating on trying to get out and trying to get food and water. Leaves, they squandered the money uh, that was meant for to take care of people when things like Hurricane Helen and things like that happen. Uh, that money was actually put towards some of these immigration policies that have brought some of these criminals into our country, possibly. And that's actually crazy. It's really concerning. There's a lot of people that died in Hurricane Helen. Now, we don't even know how many people actually died from Hurricane Helen. The numbers are still coming and still racking up. But to say that that money could have been used to save some of those lives and instead it went to making things more dangerous for us here is, is actually crazy. Not to mention that the money's actually done and gone or they're saying that they don't have enough for uh, to take care of any like actual new disasters that come. So this is the damage and devastation after one storm, just a single storm. So what do you guys think is gonna happen next, right? What do you think happens next if we get hit with another storm? What do you think happens if we get hit with, um, you know, a political situation, political strife because of our economic strifes, right? Because of uh, war or because of uh, the current political climate, right? People are talking about World War Three right now. So I think the most that anyone can do, right? is going to be just worrying about yourself, right? Because there's so many outside factors at play here. Um, you you got to worry about uh, what Russia might do, what China might do. And these are things that are just so far outside of the influence of just like a normal everyday average person. But you still need to be proactive, right? Everybody needs to be proactive on an individual level. Oh, is, you know, you're going to have to get comfortable in uncomfortable situations, right? Um, because at the end of the day, your mind, your body, and your soul are all under attack right now. And these are the only things that are really within the realm of your control. So when you want to think about preparing, when you want to think about getting ready for what might come, right? A lot of people think about, oh, I'm going to go out and I'm going to vote. I'm going to go out and I'm going to get in my community. But we tend to sometimes forget about some of the personal responsibility that we have, right? We don't take care of ourselves. We don't get out in the environment enough. We don't hike. We don't run. We don't take care of our bodies. We don't. Uh, take the time to learn about certain survival things and, you know, what to do in survival situations, right? We don't practice with our firearms enough. All of these things are things that, you know, I think that most people need to really hone in on and focus in on because these are the things that we can, you can control. These are the things that the individual has influence over, right? For yourself and for your family, 
these are the things that you have control over. Right. You can't you can't control how many immigrants you know Kamala allows into the country or how many of those immigrants are actually going to be criminals, right? But you can prepare to defend yourself against any situations that might come your way. You can prepare to defend yourself against any storms, any natural disasters, any wars. These are things that are real life things that we as Americans need to start thinking about, especially people who are in these cities and in these suburbs where, you know, your lifestyle and, and the way that you live is has a high level of convenience and accessibility, right? And people are just used to that. So when the power goes out, uh, when you got to learn how to live off the land, a lot of people are going to be in trouble. A lot. Of so while I do think there is a coordinated and planned attack to take America down, people have to recognize a threat exists before they can ever do anything about it, right? And for a lot of us, especially those of us living in this area, there's an air of normality to seeing a lot of immigrants around. And this could be an Achilles heel. I, I think a lot of people would say, like, you know, you, you have nothing to worry about. Um, but the facts are what the facts are. Again, I think people uh, in America from all walks of life, whether you live in the most rural country bum area that exists or you live in right in New York City, um, everyone's entitled to feel safe and free in their environment, right? No matter uh, where you choose to live. So people just have to recognize that this is something that's in the pipeline and do what you can about it, you know, be proactive. No, but if it's not about topics that I cover in this video or in other videos, then just don't talk to me. Honestly, if you've made it to this point in the video and you have not liked, comment, subscribe, please feel free to do so.